its uh, final uh, inductee to the Cambridge United Hall of Fame for this year. And the one thing that I personally, if I may say so, admire about the 100 years of coconuts in their approach to this is that they've made their mind up that players and managers, of course, are at the forefront of what we all see. Uh, but it's really quite important that if you're here for the long haul and watching this club and being a supporter of it, that you, you, you remember and recognise the work of people who may never see the back page. They're not there. And so to award our final inductee, and that person that we will award it to will be an off-field legend of the club, uh, the award will be presented by our current chairman and a man at the heart of putting our club with CFU and the rest of this football club at the heart of our community, David Doggett. This induction into the Cambridge United Hall of Fame is very far from being the first accolade earned by Ian Dollar, head groundsman of the club since 1979, and subsequently stadium manager and match day safety officer. Such is the esteem in which Ian is held by his peers in turf management and by the Cambridgeshire community that his mantelpiece must creak under the weight of awards, trophies and mementos. Here is one more to add to the collection, and never was an induction to the Hall of Fame better deserved. Over nearly 40 years at his beloved Abbey Stadium, Ian has been a model of professionalism, a beacon of knowledge and ability, and a paragon of dedication to his craft. Down the years, he has overcome countless challenges, some mandatory, some technical, some professional, and others arising from a lack of staff and it would have defeated lesser individuals. Ian Dalla, over the years, will have dug deep into his own pocket when machinery was needed, and the club did not have the wherewithal to obtain it. Ian has coped with good humour and equanimity, with collapsed drainage systems, the power of the elements, the vagaries of managers, and he has declined lucrative job offers from much bigger clubs. He has studied, learned, and used every trick with the greenkeeper's trade to provide playing surfaces that have been and continue to be the envy of other clubs. He has made a silk purse from a sound here many, many times. And this despite, as I intimated at times, a steady diminution of resources at his disposal. When the 18-year-old Dala arrived at the Abbey, fresh from a formative period at Pi Sports Ground in Chesterton, the club's apprentices were on call to lend a hand in stadium cleaning and maintenance. Pitch husbandry and renewal, those days are long gone, as are many of the ground staff who laboured long and hard with a dedication to the cause. And now Ian only has the indefatigable Mick Brown to call on during the week. On match days, it's a different ball game now, of course, as we all know, following the Valley Parade and Hillsborough disasters, the stadium manager's role underwent a revolution. Ian Dala simulated the changes in law and responsibility, shouldered the task of ensuring match day safety, and so did all. The hours may be long, and the to-do list almost endless, but Ian still finds time to raise large sums of money for charity. His activities in this area often involve spending time by a river or a lake, because one of his great passions beside the Abbey Greenswood is the gentle art of angling. In this sphere too, he displays huge ability, limitless patience, and a capacity to inspire others. The Indala, jack of many trades, master of most. Very sadly, Ian can't be with us tonight. He has asked us, though, to present his memento to a man who has put in more appearance on the Abbey pitch than Barry Corr. <laughs> Mr. Alan Birch.
um, Ian said, would I like to say a couple of words for him? I think he meant a couple of pages. Right? <laughs> anyway, here, here we go. Firstly, can I say how sorry I am that I cannot be in attendance this evening. I would like to thank the committee and the people who nominated and voted me for induction to the Hall of Fame. When I look back to April 1979, I was aged 19 and was headhunted by the club director, Jack Cook, who asked if I'd be interested in the position of head grouser. I was invited to attend an interview with the vice chairman, Tony Douglas, team manager, John Doherty, and the secretary, Les Holloway. I was very surprised to be offered the position and become the youngest head groundsman in the Football League. I've been very fortunate to have such amazing staff, friends and volunteers to support me for nearly four decades. They have most certainly contributed to the awards I have been lucky enough to have won over the years. Cambridge United has been a huge part of my life and as I approach the end of my 38th season at the club, I can look back fondly at so many great memories and friendships that have developed. The likes of Malcolm Webster, Willie Watson, Andy Sinton, who were generally involved in all the pranks that went on in those days, and so many ex-managers and players have remained good friends. I'm often asked why I stayed at Cambridge United for so long, when I've been offered higher profile positions around the country. The answer is simple. Cambridge United gave me the break in the world of professional football, which at the time was the equivalent of being in the championship, playing teams like Manchester City, Sunderland, Newcastle, West Ham, week in, week out. And I think loyalty is very important. And I believe it can take a lifetime to fully understand a playing surface and know exactly what it requires and when it requires it. I feel very honoured to have been selected to sit along my, alongside my good friend Rodney Slack in the Hall of Fame. Rodney himself played a major part in my early days as groundsman at CUFC. The stadium had no pitch irrigation, so I'd phone the fire station and speak to Rodney. Then on a Friday, Rodney with a fire engine and crew would turn up on Colton's Common at the rear of the having stand and pump thousands of gallons of water out of the Barmore Lake onto the pitch and flood it. <laughs> How Rodney managed to have so many fire drills on Colton's Common is still a mystery. Once again, thank you very much for all your. For <laughs> I think it's too good to be true. <laughs> but once again, thank you all very much for this prestigious award. <laughs> prestigious. <laughs> thank you. Somehow when you're in a room like this tonight, you look back and you say, for goodness sake, 
You know, the one thing that bound me to those men as a player and bound me to this place as a supporter and bound me to the people around me as a manager was the sheer unadulterated exuberance and joy of playing and winning and the tragic, heart-wrenching pain of losing. And it pushed me on and it pushed me on and it put many of us in this room together tonight to celebrate the joy of this particular football club and the role it's played in the lives of so many of us. It's a real privilege, uh, I think, for me and I no doubt for all of us to have been here. Great to have your company. Thank you for coming. Have a great evening and onwards for Cambridge United Football Club. Good night.